Hi there, welcome to Alpine Bravo. My name is Brendan. This is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this tutorial video, we'll be taking an in-depth look at how to perform engine starts in the FSR 500 by FS Reborn. This is a wonderful new single engine turboprop from uh, FS Reborn. And I was lucky enough to be on the beta testing team and I've become pretty familiar with the aircraft in that time. It's got a lot of realism in it and uh, performing engine starts correctly do require the correct procedures to be followed and there's also a good failure and damage model in the aircraft too, quite sophisticated, which has definitely been catching uh, some new users out. So we'll just go through that. What I would say though, this is an in-depth uh, video and if you want something a bit quicker, uh, without having to listen to my dulcet tones for the next 20 minutes or so, then check out the official video from uh, FSR, uh, uh, sorry, FS Reborn, uh, in the link above. Okay, let's get on with it. So here we are in the cockpit and we've gone through the before starting engine checklist and we're ready to go, but before we do that, a couple of considerations. So if we just uh, shift our focus to the EFB now. So with uh, when you first start the aircraft, all the action cameras will be on by default, and that's fine if you're not worried about realism. But if you are going to be using realistic engine starts, I'd recommend that the engine startup action camera is turned off because it takes your view outside of the cockpit at quite a critical moment during the startup process. If you do want to uh, not have to worry about failures or damaging the engine, then you can go to realism and you can just turn off the systems that you don't want to fail. If you don't want generator, start generator failures, you can turn off electrical. If you don't want to run the risk of a hot start, you can turn that off here. Uh, and if you want to use the control E uh, sort of shortcut to do an auto engine, uh, an automatic engine start, uh, then you must make sure that uh, the hot starts are turned off, otherwise you will blow the engine. Now, just turning to the throttle quadrant, you would have done this in your pre-flight, but you just want to make sure that that throttle is in idle and the condition lever here is in cutoff. Now, the condition lever only has two positions, fully aft, which is cut off, feather, and fully forward, which is run, and it should either be in one or the other, not somewhere in the middle. The condition lever is controlled on mixture, axis, or any of the mixture buttons. And actually, it's if you don't have an axis spare, then you can use uh, the mixture cut off and mixture full rich to control it backwards and forwards. And that is actually pretty handy. Now, just a word on the checklist that we're going to be using today. Um, this is the checklist from the Quick Reference Handbook that was published on Sunday the 5th of November and is available on the FSR Discord, or I'll put up some links here and in the video description. That checklist uh, replaces the one that was contained within section 10 of version 1 of the manual, uh, which didn't have um, quite enough information to help prevent users from damaging their starter motor, so it's just been updated a little bit. That's the one we'll be using today. Okay, now we can get on with a engine start uh, using the battery. Now, there are a number of different ways of starting the FSR 500. The normal way is to start it using auto mode uh, on the aircraft battery. The other options are you can use manual mode uh, on the battery or you can use a ground power unit, either in automatic mode or using manual as well. So you have actually four different ways of starting the aircraft, but the auto using the battery is the normal way and that's what I'm going to show in this video. There is a separate checklist for using the ground power unit and really you shouldn't use the auto, uh, the manual method uh, of starting the aircraft and I'll just hop up and explain what I'm talking about. So here in the overhead panel we have this push start button and that is what is used to start the engine 
and that function of that button is controlled by the start mode button and it has either two options it can either be in manual manual stop or automatic by default it's in automatic which means it's raised and not illuminated and if you press it, that puts it in the man manual or stop mode. Uh, and what that does is when it's in automatic, if you press the starter button, you can press it, release it, and then the starter will cut out automatically once the engine it detects that uh, ignition has occurred and NG has passed 56%. That is... Um, slightly different it'll be slightly different in the sim due to some limitations but essentially that's what's going on if you put it into manual mode then you have to press and hold that button for the starter to crank and that is used when dry motoring the aircraft or in some other circumstances but it's not a normal way of starting the aircraft now the starter is limited to 30 seconds uh, of continuous operation and more than that you risk overheating it and burning it out and if you burn it out, you also burn out the generator because it's the same component. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why automatic mode is used. However, uh, during an engine abort, if there's failure to light off correctly for any reason, then you've, and you're in auto mode, you have to stop it. It won't stop itself. It's looking, you know, uh, for ignition to trigger its auto stop. So that's when you have to force it into stopping by pressing the, the manual stop. That's why this button is called manual stop. We use it to stop the starter. Okay, uh, but we'll cover that in more detail in a, uh, when we come to that part of the tutorial. So let's work our way through the checklist then. And our focus wants to be down here on the PFD. It's normal to start the engine with just the battery on and not the avionics which means the pfd looks like this which is the pfd in reversionary mode and we have the important engine information here on the left hand side you can start the aircraft with the mfd on by turning the avionics on and powering that up but generally you try to avoid that because it it's more draw on the aircraft battery uh, which will decline more rapidly so we try and keep that to a minimum during the startup process and also the starter motor itself takes a big draw from the battery and uh, it can lead to a hot start if there's not enough battery volts available so what dials have we got here well we've got the torque that's not so important during the startup process this is very important the interstage uh, turbine temperature which is basically the temperature in the combustion chamber and you can see there's a yellow arc and a red arc and that is allowed during engine starts to go to 1000 degrees C for no more than five seconds it's not long at all and that'll be up in the red arc and you will get warnings if it uh, goes up into that range then we have the propeller rpm that needs to be a minimum of 1200 after engine start and then ng or the uh, basically the speed at which the gas generator turbine is spinning at and that needs to be a minimum of 13 percent before fuel is introduced why well when you crank the starter that starts spinning the uh, turbine blades and producing a cooling airflow and that cooling airflow will help prevent the combustion from getting too hot uh, and if it doesn't uh, then that can lead to a hot start so that has to get up to a certain speed uh, to provide sufficient cooling and so that's why we monitor that very carefully in the first part of the startup process and then we have our electrical information down here our volts uh, generator and alternator amps as well so the first item on our checklist was battery voltage and we're looking for a minimum of 24 and we have 24.8 which is okay and the lower that gets the more likely you run the risk of having a hot start now we turn to the overhead panel and the next item on our checklist is fuel pumps to manual and we look to see if that is indicated which it is back to overhead and then it's ignition to manual which puts on the ignition system 
and we'll just zoom in and see if that is indicated as well and it is and you can hear the igniters ticking away as well there's no limit particular limit on how long they can run for but they do have a time life and if you leave fly around with the igniters on all the time they will run down and eventually they won't uh, ignite the engine for you when you need them to the prop area is clear and now we can head back up to the overhead and we're going to go for the automatic engine start but before i press that button i'm just going to explain what will happen so once we press that button you've got 30 seconds that's as long as the starter motor can be allowed to run for so we press that and then we switch our view we'll switch our view down to the engine gauges and we'll monitor ng and we're looking for that once that's past 13 percent we can introduce fuel using the condition lever and we move the condition lever from cut off to run then we should be looking for an ignition to occur and that will be indicated by you'll hear it sound in the engine and but more importantly the itt will start to rise and it'll start to rise pretty rapidly but it should rise smoothly and what you need to do is get familiar with what normal looks like so that will help you detect a hot start condition so that's what we're looking for let's press the button and we'll shift our view down and it is worth saying that i've got some custom camera views set up here to help me switch my view quickly uh, in the cockpit that's engine start and if we switch our view down here we can see that we've got starter engaged ng is already above 13 percent so let's move our view down to the condition lever and we'll switch our view back monitor itt And it peaked at 713. It won't always peak at the same place. Um, the screen's just got brighter. The starter cast message came off. NG is rising. Prop is rising. So let's just check uh, our checklist. So oil pressure is checked rising. NG was stabilised above 13%. Our condition lever went to run. Our ITT went up and peaked at 713. The starter at above 56 uh, turned off um, our NG is now stable at 63.2 our MP which should be minimum of 1200 RPM so that is good now then we can think about getting some electrical supply to the aircraft so if we switch our view back up here our generator can go on and we check that the generator off indicator has extinguished and we've got 20 volts being supplied and 47 amps load. Now we can put the alternator on and again the alternator cast is gone and we can now see the load is being shared between the generator and the alternator. Our fuel pump switch now go to auto and the ignition can go off and again we'll see these cast messages have disappeared and the final item on the checklist is to check that the oil pressure is a minimum of 60 psi which it is oil temperature and pressure are in the green so that is a good engine start next we'll look at what happens if uh, you get a hot start uh, what a hot start looks like uh, what uh, and how you can repair it and also how to prevent it so hot what is a hot start I mentioned it briefly already but it's basically an over temperature condition in the engine uh, any time that the itt exceeds a thousand degrees for more than five seconds and you are certainly going to have engine damage um, and it's a very expensive repair bill in real life so uh, pilots go to great lengths to avoid having a hot start there are a number of different factors that can cause it uh, one of them would be having i've mentioned already if the battery is low it's not going to provide enough charge to get the starter motor spinning the turbine blades quickly enough so the engine gets too hot during combustion another cause would be having too much fuel uh, in the aircraft 
as a result of having the throttle lever not positioned you know so if that's not an idle if it's too far forward then too much fuel will get introduced during the initial combustion and you'll get an over temperature other reasons would be having a, a high residual itt and we can see here we've got uh, an ITT of 197, that's because I was just running the engine. And that needs to be below 150 to be safe of not having hot start. Um, there's a bit of margin in that. And if it is too high, you have to wait for it to drop or use the dry motoring technique to cool the engine down before attempting a start. And I'll explain that at the end of the segment. But uh, what we do have are quite good conditions now for simulating a hot start or going through a hot start so you can see what that looks like. So we are back to our uh, same position on our checklist as we were before. So we're ready. Everything's back ready for an engine start. Um, the only difference being that we've got this high I residual ITT. So we check our battery voltage and it's 24.7, which is OK. And then we will go up and fuel pumps to manual and ignition to manual. And we'll just check that those are indicated on the CAS, which they are. Prop area is clear. We want to go back up to the start mode switch and make sure that that is in auto which it is and now we can go for our engine start so there we go and now we've come down and we're looking for our ng13 there is ng13 bring it down to the throttle quadrant that can go to run and you can see the itt is shooting way up is over a thousand. We've got the ITT red cast sign and plus flashing there. Now we've got an oil pressure warning. ITT is actually cooling down now, but that's because everything's burned out. And you can hear that things are not starting properly. And if you just sort of sit here and as well as I'll just show, starter's still engaged as well. It's well over its 30 second limit. So we uh, have got some damage to repair now. So we'll just turn everything off. And I see I can't turn that off just by clicking on it. The only way you can turn it off is to press the manual stop button. If we come down to the EFB, we can go to our, well, we'll go to the pre-flight and we can see we've got a couple of things now. First of all, we're getting a warning about the battery because it's getting low, but that's not the problem. The engine is showing us damaged. Starter won't show as damaged here because it doesn't have a button yet. Uh, but if we come here and we click on the engine button, we can see that it is damaged. So to repair this, we do a full engine overhaul. And it should click OK. And whilst we're here, I'm pretty sure we damaged the starter generator. And we did. So we'll have to replace that too. Great. Everything is fixed. Now you can get back into it and uh, try another engine start. OK, so again, our battery is on. Everything, uh, the condition lever can make sure that that is in the cutoff position. <laughs> Needless to say, if that is not in cutoff position, that engine start, that is an instant halt start. So we want our fuel pumps to manual, our ignition to manual, and they are indicated. Check our prop area is clear it is and now we can check that the start mode is in auto which it is it's not illuminated and we can push the start and absolutely nothing happens you've got a new engine you've got a new starter must be a bug no it's not a bug what happened was when you blew the engine and the starter motor, you would have also, before that happened, the circuit breakers would have tried to protect those systems and they would have popped. So if we look down here at the panel, we can see that the engine start circuit breaker there has popped. So that needs to get pushed in. And also if we come right down here and look at the bus tie panel, our generator control is also popped.
so those both need to be pushed back in. Whenever you perform maintenance, and of course it's part of your before engine start uh, checklist is to check the circuit breakers and it really matters on this aircraft that you do that. So we'll try again uh, with our engine start and see how we get on this time. So our battery volts are 24.5, they're getting pretty low but that's still within uh, levels. Uh, well, our fuel pump and our ignition are still on. I didn't cancel them before. Our start mode can come off. The prop area is clear. I got out of sequence a little bit there, but uh, so start mode is an auto. And now we can go for that engine start. So NG is rising. And now we have everything good. I'm not going to introduce the fuel. Just one thing to note that when you do do an engine change, at the moment, the new engine comes with the residual ITT of the old one. You can actually see that the uh, ITT is dropping. That's because I'm motoring uh, the starter without introducing the fuel. But again, don't want to do that for too long. Otherwise, we'll damage our new starter motor again. So if you have replaced the engine, you even just need to wait for the ITT to come down or use dry motoring to get it down. I think that will, that's a slight glitch that will get resolved in a future area, uh, future release. And just to make sure our generator status is still okay after that. Now we'll look at how to prevent a hot start from developing. Uh, if you do detect one, uh, what to do about it, how to protect your engine and your starter motor. For this, I'm going to be using uh, some hardware binding for the hardware binding for the condition lever. I just shift the view down here. That's me moving the condition lever on an axis, but of course, as I've said already, you can have that on buttons as well, just to move between. And the reason for that is you need to respond really quickly and moving the mouse around moving your viewpoint and then trying to find a click spot and dragging it with the mouse is too slow and you need to respond more quickly than that so it's a really good idea to try and get that condition lever on a, on, a, on external bindings if you can. Our ITT is still nice and high, I was running the engine before, I've recharged the battery because it was getting pretty low in volts um, but uh, that's high enough to, should give us a hot start condition once we go through it but so we go back again through our checklist, so battery voltage is above 24, that's fine. And we can get our fuel pumps to manual and ignition to manual and they're illuminated. Our prop area is clear. Our start mode switch is an auto and we can now go for our engine start. So now I've shifted the view down, watching NG, I've got my hand on my condition lever. There's 13%, introducing the fuel, keep my hand on the condition lever. Oh, hot start. So it was accelerating far too quickly. So condition lever is being pulled to cut off and hit the start mode button to force the starter to stop. ITT is declining. the fuel pumps and the ignition off just check the so there's the condition lever and cut off and if we change our view to the EFB here let's uh, have a look so what's it saying engine status is okay um, what about the starter and that is okay too so by my quick action there I was able to prevent the hot start from developing but you saw how fast it occurred so you don't have a lot of time to respond. So you've seen that uh, residual ITT is quite a problem if you've had to stop the engine for any reason you want to come back and start again then you're going to have to have some way of dealing with that residual ITT. The rate of cooldown at the moment is modelled on as if the engine had been running for a long time and uh, you know the whole engine block had really heated up and there was a lot of retained thermal mass there 
and that does take quite a long time to cool down if that's the uh, if that's the case in a case where you've ignited the engine and you know it's, you've just had it running for a few seconds to shut it down that wouldn't be the case and this is an area where hopefully uh, the uh, engine temperature logic will be improved in future future versions so if we come down you can see we've got an ITT of 208 so we now know that that is not enough to do a start safely so we're gonna have to get it down and that's when we return to the dry uh, checklist number normal checklist number 15 engine dry motoring run it's right on the back of the checklist down the bottom so we look at that and what we're going to do is allow 30 seconds uh, fuel draining period so this is if you're doing a dry motoring immediately after a failed engine start so certainly 30 seconds have passed with nothing happening uh, we want to now go down and have a look at the throttle quadrant and make sure that the power lever is in idle and the condition lever is in cutoff, which it is. And then up to our overhead and fuel pumps to manual. Just uh, take that out of auto mode. The ignition switch remains off because we don't want ignition. The battery is on and the start mode can go into manual and so with the start mode in manual you can push the start you can push and hold the starter button and that will uh, motor the engine without causing any ignition to occur so I'm going to zoom right out now you're limited uh, according to the checklist of 15 seconds per cycle uh, you can go up to 30 seconds and as you motor the engine without introducing any fuel it will you know circulate cold air blow cold air over the uh, combustion area and cool the and you'll see the itt drop so i'm pressing and holding start counting in your head and itt is dropping And I've released it. We can see the ITT came down to 170, which isn't quite enough, so it probably need to wait 30 seconds and then you can go through that process again and that'll get the ITT down. And once you are at the end of that process, you just return to the normal engine start checklist. In. The final thing that we're going to look at now is how to avoid damaging your starter generator during the startup process. And this is something that has been catching a lot of people out based on the questions we've been getting on the support forums. Even some pretty experienced simmers have been caught out by this. And they think it's a bug, but it's not. It's just how it is. Um, so remember, you've got 30 seconds maximum to crank the starter and the two main causes why people are getting this failure are either because they're forgetting to turn the igniters on so no ignition occurs or that they haven't put the throttle uh, the condition lever into the run position quickly enough uh, you're just sitting there letting the starter motor run while they do other things this is where the outside action cameras don't help uh, because they don't give you a lot of time to respond to the um, uh, you know to get that condition lever and using the mouse and all the rest of it can make it quite tricky to hit the limits and I'll show I'll put the action cameras back on for engine start so we can see what that looks like so we'll start going through our normal engine start checklist now uh, the engine is nice and cool our batteries uh, volts are good so 25.3 on the battery uh, we now want to go up and put our fuel pumps on and ignition on and just make sure that both of those are indicated our prop area is clear and our start mode switches in auto so we can lift and press and there's the action camera view I mean it is really cool there's the prop spinning up okay and it takes you back in and we want to get the view down so our NG is already up at 15.8 uh, 
Okay, and this is where if you sort of start dawdling around, I don't know how much time's already gone past. A good 15 seconds already. And if you spend a bit of time dawdling, oh, you know, trying to get the uh, click spot right, uh, yeah. Just uh, maybe you, you know, you're a bit tentative with the condition lever. Uh, that doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay, put it all the way up now. And there's our ITT rising. Our ITT peaked at 7.12. NG's rising. The starter's already gone off, but it went off. Blue NG56, that's an artifact of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Prop is rising. It is actually a useful indicator that you might have uh, cause some damage to the starter motor if the starter was turning off so early. So on the face of it this looks like a good engine start or props up above RPM so we move on to the next checklist item which will be to put the generator on and you've heard a chime there and it's a repeating chime which means it's something you've got to pay attention to so if we come back down here we've got red generator off and if you check what that means, it's actually listed as generator fail in the QRH and the, the handbook. Um, but that basically means that the generator's been switched, the circuit's been closed, but there's nothing coming from the generator. That means your generator is broken. And that is because we burned the starter out, and the starter and the generator are the same thing. So if you get this, don't just think, well... I can make it go away by pressing the generator button off. Um, you can fly the aircraft <coughs> on the alternator alone. It will provide enough electricity. So you've got 47 amps sitting on the alternator now. But if you don't um, work to limit the draw on the alternator, it will be unable to supply enough uh, volts to the battery and eventually everything will go dead all the screens will go dark and that's a much more serious situation so if you get that red cast message there you have to whenever you get a, a red warning cast message like that you have to look at what it means and then go and consult the proper emergency checklist and work your way through that checklist and certainly if you get it on the ground like this then you can't proceed with your flight until you've sorted this problem out. So let's pop that off. I'm gonna put our fuel pumps off and we'll just now to perform maintenance as well you need to be on the ground with the engine shut off. So I'm just gonna pull the condition lever now to shut the engine down and we can go and have a look at the maintenance page and if we click on the generator sure enough it's damaged so we'll replace that and you'll recall after any maintenance like that you have to check your circuit breakers so the engine start was popped and the generator control was popped as well so they both need to go back in otherwise what will happen you just won't get your starter running again and once you've done that that is your starter repaired and you're good to go again so you know the key thing here is not to dawdle you've got this once you start the engine start sequence you've got your 30 seconds um to to run but equally you know and in the auto mode you've got to get that condition lever forward so as soon as ng is above 13 percent and if you don't have hardware bindings and things like that, it's probably a good idea not to use the action camera, as I mentioned at the start. Okay, well that just about covers everything for engine starts in the FSR 500. I do hope you found the video tutorial useful. Uh, do hit like and subscribe. It's always good to get those. And if you've got any questions, pop a comment in there as well. I will make some more uh, tutorials covering the checklist items on the FSR 500 uh, and I'll do those just as my time permits but uh, until then enjoy flying the aircraft and 
we look forward to not having as many blown starters in the future. So take care and see you next time.